Volume 3, Number 3, God's Country. It was nice to get out a little bit and travel the mountains and just see the lake with family in town and just to take a little road trip. So Grace, Michael, and Lauren, Monica, and the girls, and just with the rentals that we had, we just decided that it was a great idea to just take a ride into the mountains and see the lakeside. So that's what Grace said to Michael. Michael, it's just nice to get away from it all. To take the kids out, it would require car seats and extra help. So Michael took some cars from his lot and rented it out to the girls that being Lauren and Monica, and it was time for a road trip to God's country to just get away from it all, escape the bustle, the hustle of life. And it was just going to be the girls, Michael, and of course, Michelle, Grace, Miss Okoshimoto, and of course, Jessica and Kelly. Now this seemed a little off the cuff, but it just seemed like the right thing to do. Were we going to go away for a day, said Jessica? Because if we're going away for a day, I have to ask ahead of schedule. Because my boyfriend might ask to come too. Well, you can bring your boyfriend, said Michael. In fact, Michelle asked your boyfriend to come along. We're going to have cabins. Cabins, said Grace. That's a great idea. This is a getaway for all of us. Since Lauren and Monica and Aubrey and Lila and, of course, Sophia are in town, we're getting away for a little bit. We're getting away from the hustle and bustle of life itself. We're escaping to God's country for a little bit. A time to relax and unwind by the lake. Wow, this is such a great idea. We so need this. Since they were in town from Pennsylvania, it seemed only fitting to get away. To maybe go shopping or spend a few hours away by the lakeside and just sit back and relax. I don't know how much campfiring we're going to be able to do because of all the new rules and regulations, but we're certainly going to enjoy time away. Maybe we'll share some stories and relax with the baby, but it's really our first way of saying we're going to get away for a little bit. It might be too cold out, said Elijah. You know, you're so smart, said Grace. You're exactly right but we're not going to be outside that long. Jenny said, I can dance, said Grandma to Grandma. Oh, yes, it's true. It could be very cold, but dancing's not out of the question. We're going to be in the cabins, like Michael said. Yes, we're going to take the cabins, and we're going to, I'm, I'm going to take care of the bill. Don't worry about a thing. It's just going to be a nice escape for the family, a family vacation. Since we didn't have a family reunion, consider this a short reunion. Since the girls made the trip and made all the necessary arrangements to get out here, it's only fitting to do this. So here we are. We're in God's country. We traveled the windy road just to get to the lake. We're only a half hour away from home, so it's not as if we can't go home. Elijah said, I love it. I love the mountains. I love the sunset. I love everything about it, Daddy. This is a great idea. I'm glad I brought my baseball, too, said Elijah. You brought your baseball and your baseball bat? Yes, Dad. That's my favorite sport. Now, I might not know everything about baseball, said Elijah, but I'm certainly getting better. Well, we're going to have to sign you up for baseball, T-ball, said Dad to Elijah. 
Dad, I would love that. I'm ready to start playing. Elijah, if you play baseball and you and you can do as well as you do in school, I will sign you up for baseball this spring. Dad, that would be great, said Elijah. Well, consider it done, son. Grandma Yokoshoto said, oh, Elijah, you're growing up so fast. Before you know it, you'll be in third grade. You'll be playing baseball. By goodness, you might be a major league play baseball player, said Michael. Who knows? We could have stars in our household. Who, who knows what the future could hold for Aubrey? Aubrey, what would you like to be? Mm, Aubrey sh shakes her shoulders. I'm not quite sure yet. I like astronomy. Well, we have a telescope here in the back. Maybe we can pull it out so we can see the stars at night tonight. It might be too cold, said Grace, but we'll try. We'll try our best. Now, we have a cooler full of water. Does anybody want anything to drink? Me, said Grace. <laughs> Me, said Grace. Yeah, I'm thirsty. Okay, Grace, said Michael. Since you're the first one to volunteer, you also have to hand out the water to the kids. Okay, said Grace. I will do that. Anybody else for water? Yes, Monica said, I would like some water. How about you, Lauren? Would you like some water? Yes, I would like some water. Well, why don't we just pass out water to whoever does wants water? Who doesn't want water? Well, nobody showed it showed their hands, so it was unanimous. Everybody wanted bottled water. That seemed only to make sense, as this trip was obviously well on its way. As we got to the cabin, said Grace to Michael, why don't we decide who's going to stay in which cabin? It was obvious that Lauren and the girls were going to stay in one cabin with Monica and Sophia. So that was already decided upon. That was big enough for six girls, at least six people at this point. So it made sense to put them in one cabin. So who's all going to stay in one cabin together? Mrs. Yokoshoto said, I'll stay with Kelly and Jessica and who else? Well, it was unanimous. Michelle said to them, well, me and my fiance are going to stay in this single cabin. Okay, sounds good. Well, listen, Mrs. Yokoshoto, you could stay with me and Michael and the kids because really we need the assistance and we would like you to stay with us. Well, it was already decided that Mrs. Yokoshoto was going to stay with the kids and that would be Elijah and Jenny. So they decided that it was easier to do it that way. So if anybody wants to stay in a single cabin, decide on it now. It'll make it a lot easier to decide. Well, if you have a boyfriend, then you're going to stay in the single cabin. That means that it's a double-sized bed, meaning you're going to have to sleep in a double-sized bed. Any takers, said Michael. Well, there was three hands that were shown. That means if you have a boyfriend or fiance, you're going to have to sleep in the same bed or sleep in a cot. So make up your mind now. Listen, I'm not here to judge you. I'm just saying that's the decision you have to make and you have to live with your decision. Okay? I'm not trying to force it upon you, but there is extra cots in this bed, this cabins too. So you can sleep on, your boyfriends can sleep on the cots too. Like, same thing. If your boyfriend's going to stay over, let him sleep on the couch. If you know what I mean. Well, they decided that that's what the arrangements were. If the boyfriend is willing to let the girls sleep on the bed, that they would be willing to sleep on the cots. If it meant respecting the girls. 
and it's not my rules. It's just if you want to respect your girlfriends, it should be only fitting to sleep on the cots. So if that's the arrangement you're going to make, then that's okay by me. But I'm not discouraging it. I'm not encouraging it. I'm just laying it on the line. There are some rules to this. And Grace said, wow, that was really brazen of you. You don't tell people what to do. You're just saying, this is what's going on. I'm not encouraging it. I'm just saying that there are some rules to this. Okay, Michelle said, me and my fiance are going to do this. We're going to take the cottage with two beds, two single beds. Oh, there is a cottage with two single beds? Yeah, we're going to take the cottage with two single beds. Well, that in that case, why don't all of you girls that have boyfriends take the cottages with two single beds? Yeah, there are cottages, not cabins. Okay, well, in that case, then it's, it's settled. Perfect. Okay, how much does it cost? And he looked at the bill and he says, well, that's, no problem. I'll take care of the expenses for the the overnight and we'll call it a night. We're only staying overnight and we're going to go back home because Lauren and Monica have to get back anyway for their trip back to Pennsylvania. Okay, it's settled. We're going to go out to breakfast in the morning and get back home tomorrow. Okay, so what are we doing tonight, Daddy, said Elijah. Excited, excited at the idea that he's going to spend the night at, in a, his first time in a camping cottage. Well, son, we're going to go look at the stars. We brought the telescope, so it'll be your first night, and you'll be able to probably see the stars a lot better by the lake. Wow, Dad, this is really great. They do call this God's country for a reason, too, Elijah said. Yeah, Dad. I know this. I learned this in science class. This truly is what they call God's country. I'm so glad you decided to do this, Dad. I'm so glad you said that, son. Elijah's become better at communication. It's obvious Elijah's full of excitement. And Jenny just intently listens. Jenny's a good listener. Grandma? Yes, son. I like this idea so much. This is such a good idea. Yes, it was. I'm so happy you understand. Your understanding is broadened. School has really helped you develop into a very fine young man. I'm so happy you're coming to understand things. What else have you learned, Elijah? Said Grandma Yokoshoto. Oh, I understand so much more. I could sit and talk about it for hours about what the planets and the alignment of the planets and the stars, like the Jupiter and Saturn, like we could see it at night in a telescope. You can actually see Neptune and Jupiter and the stars. Drink some water. It's very good for you. Can we get orange juice or go to the grocery store, said Grace? We're probably going to need some food. Yeah, is anybody up to go in the grocery store to get some items at the grocery store? Well, they all decided that it would be best to stick together as a group because they really don't want to be separated. So they all decided to get back in their cars and go to the local, local grocery store in town. Okay, so that settles that. We're all going to stick together and go to the grocery store. We're only going to get items we need for overnight. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. Did everybody items for showering and cleaning up? Yes, yes. And who didn't bring any items for showering and cleaning up? I'm talking about towels, etc. Because we're, we're going to have a lot of laundry to do when we get home. Remember, I hope you brought some laundry bags with you. So any dirty clothes, make sure you put into the dirty clothes bag too. Because cleaning up is always much different than packing. Well, that settles that. It's all ready to go? Ready to go. Okay. So as they lined up their vehicles, 
and drove to the local store. They bought enough groceries to last them for the night. As they packed their vehicles with groceries, it was enough to get them through the night. They drove back to the campsite where the cottages and, and the cabins that they rented and parked their vehicles in their parking spots and unpacked their cars with the minimal groceries that they had. It was enough to get them through the night. They were gonna go out to eat the next morning, so they didn't really need much. Listen, we're gonna go to Cracker Barrel in the morning for breakfast, so on our way back, we're gonna head to Cracker Barrel and then we're gonna call it a day. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a great plan, said my Monica. And Lauren agreed, and so did the kids. Everybody thought that was a great idea. It was such a fantastic idea for this over-the-night trip. It's just what we needed, somewhere to go. I figured since you traveled all this way, we had to do something. We haven't had a family reunion or a trip or anything in a while. And with now Josiah, you all get a chance to spend time with Josiah and Melissa, too. As Lauren and Monica held Josiah and held Melissa, it was a good chance for Monica to finally sit down and hold Josiah. Monica just held Josiah close to her heart. She said to Grace, it's so awesome to hold Josiah. I'm so happy we had this time. As everybody was unpacking the car of groceries, Monica just enjoyed that little bit of time that she so longed for to hold Melissa as well. As they got to talking and spent that time together, Lauren too held Josiah and then held Melissa. It was a good time for Grace to just get, get time to catch up with her sisters. So my, Michael left the cabin to let the girls catch up with each other and talk and hold the kids. It was such a perfect time. As the sun was about to go down, the boys were outside playing with ball. Elijah, are you good at catching the baseball? I think so, Dad. I got a good glove. How did you get a glove? Mrs. Yokoshoda looked around and looked up and around and she says, this is Yokoshoto. You bought him a glove? A baseball glove? Yes, I did. I knew he was going to be a good baseball player. I had to buy him a baseball glove and a baseball bat and a baseball. So, here we are. So, throw a ball. So, wouldn't you know it? He was equipped to play baseball. I didn't know, said Michael. I had no idea. Surprise, surprise. As he threw the ball, he whipped it right past his dad's leg. Son, you're probably a better pitcher and a thrower. I'm not sure, but you surprised the heck out of me. Dad, I'm a lot better of a thrower than you thought. Give me a chance. Just give me a chance this spring and I'll prove it to you. Sign me up for Pee Wee football or Pee Wee baseball. I promise you, I won't let you down, Dad, said Elijah. Elijah, I'm so impressed. I didn't expect this at all. Well, Dad, as we are going to close up for the night, because it looks like it's getting dark out, let's think of what we're going to do. Let's get the telescope out and get ready to look at the stars tonight, said Elijah to his dad. That's fine, son. We'll get it ready together. Let's rest up a little bit and then let's eat a little something here shortly and then we'll close up for the night. Well, Michael said to Grace, did you know what Elijah just did? No, Grace said. He just threw a baseball faster than some baseball players in the major leagues. Really? said Grace. I didn't know he was so good at baseball. Well, neither did I. We're signing him up for Pee Wee Baseball. I'll be the first one to show up at that baseball camp, too. If he has to go to baseball camp, I'll be the first one to sign him up. 
Wow. I'm impressed. Do you know that Grandma Yoko Shoto bought him the baseball bat and the baseball glove and the baseballs? No, I had no idea. Yeah, well, they just let out the cat out of the bag. So right now, Elijah's setting up the telescope, and I told him that once the sun goes down, we'll, we'll watch the stars at night. So we're going to relax a little bit. And right now, I just want to sit down and just take a breather. I need a little water right now. I got a little thirsty out there. Well, it seems like you're enjoying yourself, Michael, said Grace. Yeah, this is so much fun. We're out in the outdoors. Even though it's a little chilly, it's just perfect. I mean, it turned out to be 60 degrees, but I know once that sun goes down, It'll get a little chilly. So I don't want to be out too long. No, it was actually 65. Oh, okay. Well, 65. I'm sorry. I didn't know that, Grace. No, it was actually particularly warm today. We get those rare days like they often get here in the Midwest. I am, I'm loving it. For February, having a warm day, we'll take it, like I said. It's just strange how the weather has been. To get a warm day like this, we'll take advantage of it. Yeah, for sure, said Michael to Grace. By the way, I have to put the kids down for a nap. They really had so much country air that they got so tired. After my, Monica and Lauren was holding the babies, they fell asleep. And Monica and Lauren got a chance to catch up with me and the kids, so that was perfect timing. I don't think we timed this more perfect. We needed this time to get away. Yeah, this was perfectly timed, as you said, Grace. Exactly right. You could, you took the words right out of my mouth. As they just sat and relaxed, they got the lawn chairs out. It's a good thing we took the bigger car, the rental, so we could have lawn chairs to sit out. Something to sit on is always nice, isn't it? Nice to sit out and look out on the lake. Yeah, that SUV that was on the lot, I don't normally rent that out unless somebody has SUV, but I took the SUV out for a reason so we could have lawn chairs. So taking the lawn chairs was a particularly perfect idea for this ideal spot that I had in mind. So there's some extra lawn chairs if you want to pull them out. Who wants to pull out the lawn chairs with me? Well, Michelle said, I would like to sit out in the lawn chair. And her boyfriend, it, Michelle's boyfriend, Mark, said, I will, I'll help out. Okay, great, Mark. Perfect. Well, in that case, let's sit around and just relax before the sun goes down because it's about to go down here. And once it goes down, I hope you have some sweatshirts and extra jackets. I mean, double up, more or less. Okay. So they get the lawn chairs out, and they sit out by the lakeside. This is really beautiful. Those cottages are beautiful inside. They really are. It turned out to be a perfect night. The stars were starting to close in. You could almost see half a halfway point into the sunset and the darkness. This is perfect. This is what they call twilight. Just as the dark meets the light. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Just what I want. I'm starting to feel a little tired though. I'm just hoping I can stay up before I fall asleep. Getting all this country air is making me sleepy, said Jessica, I'm about to ready for a nap myself. Well, just stay up a little bit longer because it's just about to get dark. And we can at least see the stars before we get to sleep. And as it started to get dark, it was just in time to see the stars. And they held out long enough to see the stars. And Elijah was showing the, the star Saturn. And they got to see the North Star. Well, 
everybody, who's ready for a long rested nap or at least go to sleep for the most part? Well, it was unanimous. Everybody was ready to get some sleep. Listen, we got to be up early because we got to check out. So we're going to get breakfast at Cracker Barrel. Anybody have any questions about our traveling back home? No? No questions? Okay. So we're going to go to Cracker Barrel in the morning. We're going to follow each other back. It's only a half hour back home, so we're going to make the trip and go to Cracker Barrel. Before we go home, we'll head to Cracker Barrel and then we'll have a nice big breakfast. Sound like a deal? Sound like a deal. So make sure you have all your stuff ready for the morning. We'll pack our cars. Once we get ready to go, we'll head out. Okay? I'll see you in the morning. Okay, I'll see you in the morning. Anybody want to stay up, that's fine by me. Just make sure you're up and ready to go, okay, in the morning. And be on time. Okay, sounds great, Michael. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, said Michelle. Thank you. By the way, it, this was such a great idea, said Mark. Mark, we should do this again if we ever have a chance to. This was perfect, said Kelly. I loved it. Okay, great. Excellent. I'm so happy you like the idea. This is what God's country is all about. It means escaping the hustle and bustle of life. So as they all huddled back into their cottages and cabins and the lights were all out, the kids were fast asleep. It was just in time so that everybody got a chance to get a good night's rest. It was long awaited. Everybody's exhausted. You could just tell. It was a long day. The next morning, as everybody was starting to wake up and brush their teeth and shower and clean up, they were starting to pack their vehicles and pack their bags. Just as instructed, they were ready to get their cars ready to go. You could see everybody was pretty much organized and everybody wanted to go to Cracker Barrel. They were hungry. So by the time Michael and everybody had gotten the kids into their seatbelts and into their car seats, it was just about time to check out. Well, anybody need water or anything to go? Um... I think we're okay. If anybody needs anything last minute, because we're going to head to Cracker Barrel, we should be there in about 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes at the tops. No, I think we're ready to go. All right, so if you need your navigator, if you seem to get, lose us, make sure you keep your navigator, because we're going to be on 51 and we're going to just head straight into 51, to the Cracker Barrel on 51. Any questions? No questions here. Okay, follow me. As they made their way to Cracker Barrel, within 15 minutes, they got to the Cracker Barrel location and lined their vehicles out in the back side of the parking lot and parked their vehicles and headed into Cracker Barrel and waited for their table. A party of 20. Make that 25. With how many high chairs? Oh, uh, I might have lost count. One, two, definitely two high chairs. Well, just one high chair for now and a baby car seat high chair. Okay, M more or less, just make it 20. Okay, we'll get your table ready for you, sir. Okay. It was no sooner they sat down and started ordering for their breakfast. They all ordered either pancakes or scrambled eggs. It was pretty easy order. And by the time their pancakes and their order came up, they finished off their meal and no sooner the check was came. They came and left and by the time they got home, 
It was so long overdue, and everybody was so happy for the God's country was one of the best choices they made on their on their bucket list of things to do. Just one more reason to be excited about the things that are ahead. And this, of course, was one of them. As they rode home in their vehicles, it's the memories that they leave behind on the trip to God's country. And this was one of the best little hot spots that they'll remember and treasure.